know what the most annoying thing in the world is? It's not jumping cockroaches like you might think. It's not water that's too cold that touches your body and annoys you. It's having too many options in life. You go into a store, oh, look at those deodorants. Okay, I'm gonna, why are there 75 brands and you spend all day there? I've narrowed down all your camera choices today. The top three companies and the bottom three. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So you may be in Best Buy right now looking for a 90 inch television to watch the definitely real evening news in 8K and you might want to veer to the right and oh, there's cameras over there. Here are the reasons to choose each brand. These are their strengths. So this should be very obvious. It'll jump out at you. You'll be like, oh yeah, I want that. And then you go into that through my affiliate links, of course. So the number one mirrorless brand who's at least lying to us, pretending they're the number one brand is still Canon. I. Sony argues, they say the same thing, like, we're actually number one. I don't know who's number one. I just know that those are probably the top two right now, Canon and Sony, and Canon's an interesting set. This is going to be a very positive video, hardly any negativity. If you want a Canon camera, it's probably because you want happy, bright color science that just works straight out of camera. Nobody does it better than Canon. Some might. Nikon's pretty good, Blackmagic, Olympus but Fuji as well. Canon color science, straight out of camera, it's just a nice look. You don't have to do much. If you don't know what you're doing with color tweaks and making red more yellow and just go with Canon, you'll be happy. You get a Sony next to it and you're like, oh no, what did I do? It's so much better of a camera, but look at the colors. Canon color science is that of legend. Also, they have the best, this is the dumbest reason to buy a camera, but their bodies are just better. Their SD cards, you push it in, there's plenty of room for your finger. That's a nice thing. It's really nice. I wrote it down. Dual pixel autofocus. Is it Sony level? Almost. It's like really good and it was really good for a while and sometimes it's nice. It does work. There's the odd time, but like I've been filming in here like 85 mil 1.2. The odd movement it won't be able to catch up with, but for the most part, it's pretty darn reliable. You got Canon colors, amazing autofocus, simple looking menu. For morons who want a touch screen, there's color coded, it looks nice. Oh, I know where that is, touching things. For professionals, there's a lot of nothing negative about the menu system. It's a simple touch screen. Nice little options, not super customizable, but do you even need that? You probably don't. Budget, full frame, but like APS-C level lenses. They're so cheap, like 100 to 400. It's like, wow, that's so cheap and light. A lot of like 85 mil Tony too. There's a lot of really budget RF lenses that are good enough for some people and they're cheap and light and they're like almost what well, not a professional lens but so cheap huh so those are the reasons you get into canon just a nice look straight out of camera pretty easy to use somewhat cheap if you choose the budget options you get a background blur canon color science good autofocus decent little system nice pushing in of the slot that feels fun huh man sony Here's where you go for the technology. They have more speed, the best autofocus in the game, better video specs. There's all kinds of stuff and technology in there and it hurts the soul to use it. A lot of people don't like the ergonomics of Sony. I perhaps love them the most. It's easy, I don't understand the plight, but like Sony autofocus is where you're at. It's so reliable, unless you're using a Zeiss lens, of course. They're only nice lenses. That's fun. But Sony's probably the most polished of all systems. Just everything's gonna work. Professionals use them and you don't have to think much. Just put a box somewhat around your subject and point it in his general direction. As long as you're on a gimbal, it'll be smooth and he'll be in focus. I mean, I see the UFC uses Sony cameras. The odd time it'll hunt 
but like it's tracking a guy walking through a crowd. It's like, it's so reliable, it's stupid reliable. Also, their video just looks sharper. And even though some of us want a softer filmic look, most people prefer the sharpish, sharper <laughs> image side by side. And they'll be like, that's the better one. Even if it's a smartphone, cause it's over sharpened. There's the better one. I like the colors on it. But they have class leading video specs. They were doing 4K 120 when it was a myth. And HD 240 with autofocus, perfect. It's like, they're leading and the files are easy to edit. Canon, so easy. 10 bit, 422, they get everything. 4K sharp, oversampled. Somewhat decent stabe, not really. Also, E-mount has like the most lenses ever of any mount. It's just every company is allowed to make lenses and they work in autofocus. Zeiss glass you have access to. Not the best autofocus, sometimes it'll hunt, but the best look comes from a Sony Zeiss combo. And they're good. And just like your Sigmas for some reason and Tamron and Samyang, it just gets uglier and uglier, but a lot of lenses, huh? Choices. They're yours, too many. Also in general, Sony is usually smaller than the competition. You have a Nikon Z8, oh. And then Sony A1, much smaller. And then comparable lenses, smaller lenses for Sony. So everything is just a smaller package. Canon's a little big, Nikon's big. Panasonic, fat, but like not bad. Small, super reliable, polished. Color science, acceptable to some. Sometimes I prefer it. I don't know what to say about it. Sony's not bad. When it comes to Nikon, Nikon's kind of, they copy other companies. There's not a ton of reasons to go with Nikon because they, they're basically doing what other companies are already doing. That's why they have the Mimic Monkey. He comes over, he copies the other companies and he makes you a product and it's a decent product, but they have strengths. Wildlife. They're the only company really pushing the wildlife primes. They have so many options. So it seems like that's a wildlife system now. So like if you, that's your main thing, Nikon, right up there. Number one, color science, right up there with Canon. I see side by sides all the time. I usually gravitate to the Nikon image as the favorite. Canon, Nikon, amazing. Sony, eh. ergonomics. This is why people love Nikon. It's just the handling. I don't care. I almost never touch my cameras. It's either like they're filming me far away or I'm vlogging. It's on a tripod. I'm not even touching the damn thing. I'm hardly ever behind and like needing to actively change settings. Like I set it, boom, press record and walk away. But if you're the type of guy who's behind a camera, he's tweaking settings, Nikon has great button placement and the grip is good and everyone loves Nikon ergonomics for some stupid reason. Potential futuristic video specs coming maybe. With the acquisition of RED, you never know. We might start getting some cinema cams and really high-end video mirrorless. It could happen, but right now, not really leading the industry, trailing it if anything. You have HD nothing frames per second. It's unfortunate. You're the worst in slow motion, and that's my only favorite spec. And you're the worst at it, and it hurts. But you have 8K60. Those files sound reasonable. But of the big three companies we've listed so far, Nikon's the only one with no flippy screens. Only on the ZF photo-centric camera, for some reason, has a flippy screen. But like we don't have that YouTuber hobo cam yet. So there's not a ton of reasons to pick them over Canon and Nikon, Sony. I'll, I'll go home. When it comes to Fuji, now you're in a crop sensor. These were all full frame options. They have crop options in Canon, Sony, and Nikon, but you're not buying into the system for that. Some do for some reason, but Fuji, little crop so you're getting worse performance all around but the reason you get into Fuji is the vintage feel most people like the look of the camera with the silver tops they like the feel of the dials it's very filmic there's no microphone there I hit it it's against the black shirt you could never know I didn't touch it 
Fuji look, you're feeling things, you're changing dials, and it looks cool, you're in a magazine, someone takes a picture of you because your camera looks so cool, and then the pictures you take have a vintage look to them. It's a different color science, vintage film look. That's mainly why you're in, it's just vintage. You eat cereal for breakfast, only expired cereal that you buy off eBay for hundreds of dollars a box. And you can afford it because of your Fuji pictures sell so well because they're vintage. They have a lot of small gear as well. So it's just small and it's a fashion accessory. And that's why people, it's more about the character than anything because they have not great autofocus or stabe or anything. Any feature is pretty much bettered by Sony, Canon, and Nikon. But if you're all into classic, when it comes to Panasonic, now we're getting into the fringier companies of the bunch. They're a good company. They, I loved the microwave my mom had. Convection oven thing lasted 25 years probably. It's fantastic. And I have some batteries from Panasonic. Good times. A good microwave company. Some hair dryers. They do all kinds of stuff. When it comes to cameras... It's more of a videographer's dream. Best stabe in the business. So stabilization, blowing everybody else away. But it's more like the video tools that people love Panasonic for. It's the waveform monitors, the all kinds of codecs with your ProRes, and everything's just set up for videographers. They're terrible people. They're not like us, YouTube scrubs, filming videos and making fun things happen in the world. but. These people, like, they're going to work for a company. It's a social media thing. They have gimbals and they need open gate and all these things that are terrible. And they make nightmare content online and you hate it, but it's easy for them to do because of all the tools Panasonic provides for them. But Panasonic has some of the best ergonomics just using the camera. Just lots of tools, custom modes, all kinds of fun. It's good. It's a good use and you get access to all the Leica glass. Is it real Leica glass on the Micro Four Thirds side? I'm not so sure about that, but it's better than not having a Leica thing. At least it says it on the glass. Panasonic always seems to be catching up to the competition, and sometimes they leapfrog 300 frames per second. No one's done that yet, and Panasonic did it a long time ago. So like. Who knows, maybe their next thing, like they're actually pushing some specs and it's like, yeah, we're here now, aren't we? S1H2, S2H something coming, maybe? So like there's potential there, somewhat. When it comes to OM system, save the best for last, huh? That's a, that's a promising company. There's a lot of reasons to get into it. The Stabe, some good Stabe there. Almost Panasonic level. Color Science? beyond most some good stuff and if you're hungry olympus om system cameras often come with a free six pack of sushi because they're mainly a sushi company they do make cameras why not do both om system has a lot of interesting photography modes live view nd stuff i don't understand or will never use but like they do have a bunch of interesting AI gimmicky things for photos. But like when we're talking about video, which is the only thing that matters, OM system, you'd be hard pressed to find a reason to really invest in right now. Somewhat good wildlife. 300 mil prime is not, not a bad lens there, but they're pricey for what they are. They've always been pricey. Sometimes I see like an OM-1 for like two grand. I'm like, what do you mean? You can get a Sony ZV-E1 for that. So which system would I recommend for most people? I have to say, I think most people would get the best footage out of a Sony. It's just going to look nicer. Usually the dynamic range is higher. It's sharper. It's just better than most of the other companies. Your subject will actually be in focus. And I know you're going with like Tamron glass and Sigma, so that's unfortunate for you. But if you would spring for a Zeiss, they're even cheaper used, you freak. You'd have like the best image. You might have to learn how to color grade a bit. 
but I would push people towards Sony. Pretty good. Canon's an iffy one. It's a great look. Hot damn those files. If you have a really nice computer, then you can play them. Nikon, we're still kind of waiting. We're not sure if I can really recommend them. They're, they're decent. The decent look, but they're not finished. So, like, I would push people to Sony first, maybe Canon second, and then Nikon. And then you're looking probably Panasonic as the next option. Good stay. Good codex. Fuji is more if you're just weird. You have, like, kneecap leather patches on shorts for some reason. It's like, it's vintage, bro. OM system never. Black magic hardly ever, except the OG, of course. I was in focus for some of that. Do you agree with my strengths? What other strengths did I miss? It's not an exhaustive list. I didn't spend all night doing it, but I probably missed a couple things. Sue me. Whatever, man. I'll leave. Now, buy something through affiliate links. It's fun to do. It's not fun. You just lose money, and I gain very little from it. Everyone loses, except Amazon. Subscribe for more videos.